All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining this webinar. It's a beautiful day here in Fort Worth. That's where I'm at at our Blend Supply headquarters. My name is Samuel Kalashaw, and I've been with Blend Supply for about two and a half years now or so, and I'm I'm responsible for Blend's marketing. I oversee all the social media, newsletters, all that kind of stuff. If you've ever seen any of our, our media, I, I oversee all that. I wanted to put together this webinar today, uh, partnering with our friends over at Kimberly Clark to just address some of the concerns some of our industry partners have had uh, over the past couple of months. You know, we've seen a lot of a lot of craziness, obviously. We're all affected, all impacted, and we just want to address some of those concerns when it comes to hygiene and cleanliness in your facility. You know, I'm sure a lot of you have um, customers or employees that are concerned. You know, that's that's totally valid, and we want to just address those concerns and equip you to move forward. So that's that's kind of our goal here. If you're uh, unfamiliar with who Blunt Supply is, you know, if you're just tuning in, you're, you're not sure who we are, we're a leading distributor of coatings, tools, and refinished supplies. Uh, you know, we, we partner with aviation shops, industrial shops, military shops, and uh, we just supply things like coatings, paint equipment, safety tools, abrasives, tape, that kind of stuff. And so if you have any questions on that or any you want to see any additional information, just head over to BluntSupply.com. So let's see, moving on to the webinar, um, you know, we're going to address any con uh, questions you have as well about uh, going back to work and workplace cleanliness. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the, uh, into the Q&A section. We'll get to them. We've got a couple of great panelists with us today. We've got uh, Logan Boyd here with us. He's a industrial accounts manager with Kimberly Clark. So we've been with Kimberly Clark for a couple of years now, partnering with them. And Logan's really helped us a lot. We've gotten to work with him several times over the past few years. And uh, he's provided a lot of advice for our, our partners as well. And so he's, he's trained me, several people on our team on some of the solutions that Kimberly Clark has. And so I really appreciate uh, Logan joining us. We've also got Joe Simpson with us here. He is uh, one of our account executives based over on the East Coast. So he, he works uh, in, in shops full time, helping them with their safety and efficiency, helping them with their processes as well. So he's based over in Georgia. And we've also got Todd Roberts on the line as well. Uh, he is based in Nashville. Uh, Todd, how many years have you been with Kimberly Clark? Ten years. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm I'm excited to have you here and and hear your perspective. I appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. All right. Let's see. Joe, are you are you ready to to go? I am here. Good morning, yeah, everybody. What, what kind of uh, what kind of concerns are you seeing in in some of the shops that you're working with? So as far as as being a out there and COVID and everything going on, um, I would say the very first thing is is if they're a corporation or an LLC, they're locked down. They're not really taking visitors onto their property. Um, a lot of our vendors, if they're big names such as Kimberly Clark, 3M, um, they're also their reps aren't allowed to come with me to site visit a lot of times because of just liability. Um, so. If it's a family-owned type uh, uh, company or you know some of that nature, they're more receptive. And then from there, you have the next tier you fall down to is if they are receptive as far as your purchasing agent um, might see you, but trying to get the product to the floor becomes an issue because um, what we're seeing is usually your floor shop manager or that type of person um, is overloaded right now because of two reasons. Either they're so slow, they've cut back, and they're just too busy because they're doing six jobs, or they've cut back and they're spiking. And we've had a few shops too that, you know, they have a COVID scare, or someone actually has tested positive on site. So the whole company has to shut down, they have to deep clean. And then of course, all the people as a sales rep that you need to talk to are no longer available to see you. Um, the positive side is 
purchases are open if you're trying to replace the same product. Uh, so if I call them up and they say, you know, we're using this cumulative Clark wipe, we're using this 3M sandpaper or tape, we're using this paint gun, if you can beat the price, they are open to switching because they are wanting to save money. You know, every, everyone's kind of tightening in and trying to save costs, but unfortunately I'm just done on price. If I look at them and go, hey, I know you're using this towel, this this Kimberly Clark towel, this 3M sandpaper is better and you need to switch to it. Well, first thing that a purchaser is gonna tell me is you gotta talk to the floor shop manager and then it comes to a halt. You know, and of course, if you even can get them, they're like, I just don't have time to switch that towel right now or try it. Call me when this thing slows down. So if you know you open my my CRM, it's fully loaded for site visits, you know, four months from now. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure well, four months from now when I call them, you know, everyone's gonna still be busy. Um, so that portion is what I see as far as the sales guy trying to get in. Uh, some of our current customers I go in, the biggest problem I see and try to bring their attention is break rooms. So they put all this this stuff. You walk to the front counter, they're taking temperatures. They got six feet distancing rule. Um, people are wearing their masks as you walk around the facility and talking to each other. And then the lunch bell goes off, and I look in there, and there's 25 guys packed into a cafeteria and removing their masks and their gloves because they got to eat. Um, so you know, I would think focus on break room discipline <laughs> and maybe actually really looking at products to clean and sanitize. Um, and the last thing I've seen is, is uh, at least I don't know if it's true or not, but reports of, yes, there are people out doing the sanitizing portion and disinfecting, but they're not cleaning. Apparently, if you do not clean that surface first, <laughs> that disinfectant can't necessarily kill stuff if it's underneath the dirt. And, um, and that's layman's terms. I, I'm sure there's a better way of putting that. But basically, it sounds like these viruses and things can hide within the dirt. Um, and the last thing I see, which is kind of disappointing, and I don't know if that's just late to the game from everybody, is a lot of facilities just have generic products, like the face masks, the hand sanitizers, that stuff seems to be coming in more readily, but, um, it, I mean, the, you look at the box and I don't even know where it came from, <laughs> you know, it might as well just be white box that says China on it, but I mean, I've never heard of these names, these companies, the labels, so, um, I feel like, you know, of course, this is my first pandemic, but I feel like because some of that stuff we had and I didn't get it in there when I needed to. So um, I do believe that even if it's not about selling now, it's about making sure if something like this arises again, that they know the products are there in place um, and to make sure we get them in there where they're carrying them before it happens. So. That's kind of my little take from being in the field. I don't know if anyone has any more direct questions or something I can clarify on. All right, thanks, Joe. Logan, why don't you uh, show us through some of what Kimberly Clark's doing? Yeah, so appreciate uh, Samuel, uh, Joe, and the Blend Supply team letting us be involved. Uh, thanks for everybody being on the call. Uh, first of all, Samuel, can you see my screen? Yes, sir, we can. Okay. So to Joe's point, um, you can see right here on my screen, placing hand sanitizer and signage in break rooms and common areas is a step in the right direction. But based on our studies at Kimberly Clark, we're showing that it just simply is not enough to make a real impact. So what can we do at Kimberly Clark to help educate you, educate your employees on proper um, you know, cleaning of the workplace, disinfecting? So at Kimberly Clark, we have a three-step process so there is a difference you know a lot of times we're especially with everything going on the past couple of months we've heard people say we need sanitizing uh wipes um you know we need disinfectant well what are they actually doing so cleaning uh does actually remove the germs uh, the dirt and impurities from the surface um so you can basically using a soap or water to remove the germs from the surface it doesn't necessarily kill all the germs, but you do remove them, um, so it lowers the risk of spreading. So cleaning a surface is kind of the first step. And then sanitizing actually lowers the number of germs on the surface. It doesn't necessarily kill off all the germs, but it just lowers the amount that are on the surface itself. 
And then finally, disinfecting actually kills the germs or objects um, that are on the surface. So um, disinfecting, uh, the CDC does recommend using a EPA certified disinfectant. You can find that on the back of a spray bottle. Um, you know, it's in pretty big bold letters that say EPA certified if it is EPA certified. So with that being said, on this document right here, we have a couple of insights. Um, the mobile phone uh, harbors about 6,300 bacteria per phone, which we thought was interesting. And the average work desk has 400 more time, 400 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. So simple objects like this that are around an office, even a break room, definitely need to be uh, hit, you know, a couple times a day uh, with proper cleaning and disinfecting. Um, also, somewhere down in the middle, if you guys could see that, nearly 95% of adults do not wash their hands long enough, and we're going to get in that in a little bit. And then cotton towels, if you guys have microfiber towels or maybe a t-shirt rag or a laundered shop towel, um, cotton towels reduce disinfectant strength above the 85%, which is a pretty alarming statistic. Going down, we also uh, recommend using paper towels versus jet air dryers. So this is something, I've been with Kimberly Clark for about three years now. Um, this is something that's been around for a long time, but it's even more prevalent with the COVID virus. Um, so for those uh, facilities that might be using jet air dryers, it's a great opportunity to help reduce the spread of bacteria within the washroom by using a disposable paper towel. So you heard me say 95% of adults don't wash their hands properly. 77% of the bacteria can be reduced by using a paper towel. Whereas with a jet air dryer, the inner surface of the jet air dryers can harbor up to 48 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. So, you know, right now we're being told to stand six feet away from each other. And especially if you're in a restroom, it's kind of hard, you're in close quarters. So these jet air dryers can actually spread bacteria up to six and a half feet. So if we're being told to be six feet away, well, the bacteria from these dryers can actually spread up to six and a half feet and linger in the air for up to 15 minutes. So with that being said, I'll stop right there. These are just a couple of insights that we're seeing, um, especially with hygiene on the forefront of everybody's mind. Um, this is just some information and statistics that we have put together at Kimberly Clark for you guys to be aware of. So are there any questions before we move forward on um, actually the products that we can help out with? I don't see any questions. Okay, perfect. So I will go over here. So you guys heard me say, what's the difference in cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting? So again, we've got this right here. And at Kimberly Clark, um, we have a line of disposable wipers called Wipeall, uh, which is the number one leading brand in North America. So with the CDC, again, right here, uh, driving compliance within cleaning and hygienic uh, habits within the workplace. So I'll scroll on down. So a lot of times um, spray and wipe is the solution. You know, if you've got a break room or an office, uh, the spray and wipe. So if you've got a spray bottle, this is a chart that we recommend uh, up here at the top. It had, basically breaks down the material of all of our disposable wipers and what they're compatible with. Um, so if you guys are using bleach in the facility, um, you know, hydrogen peroxide, anything along those lines, super easy chart. So you guys can send this based on what you're using at your facility. We can send this over to you and make the proper recommendation for cleaning and disinfecting a surface. And as I keep scrolling on down, we've got all our technology here. And then we've got, again, some more insights, but I'm gonna keep scrolling down. So these are the actual cloths that uh, we recommend and the CDC recommends for actually cleaning and uh, disinfecting on the surface. So at Kimberly Clark, we have a L series wiper. L means limited use. So if your employees are you know, just spraying uh, down a surface and wiping it once and tossing it, we've got a perfect solution for that and we also have an x series x means extended use so for those customers that are using t-shirt rags or maybe laundered shop towels we have the perfect solution number one to help you guys be uh, within the cdc guidelines and the recommendations and also uh, for cost savings 
So those laundered shop towels, a lot of times we see employees wiping down one surface, they put it in their back pocket, walk through another surface and wipe it down. That is huge cost contamination issues. With the X cloth, if they were picking up maybe an oil spill or you know, if they're just wiping down uh, you know, a surface real quick with our L-series wiper, that wiper is disposable. So we do have a money back guarantee versus the t-shirt rags and the laundered shop towels. We guarantee 20% cost savings within 60 days. So to Joe's point, everybody's looking for cost savings right now. If your facility is using something along the lines of uh, not a disposable wiper, um, we'd love to get a trial going with you guys and challenge you um, to you know, help us get into your facility um, and discuss these money back guarantees. So um you can see the money back guarantee again if you take anything away we've got 20 percent guarantee cost savings within 60 days this is uh, some information that we can send out as well so i know joe's out in the field um you know we can send this all the blend reps to send out to everybody but this is basically a facility product recommendation checklist so as you can see i'm sitting in my home office we've been at home working since the first week of march uh, and we're going to be at home for the foreseeable future. So how can we still make the proper recommendations while we're working from home? And we've developed this checklist basically to send to all the blend reps, as well as all of the customers and the end users out there uh, that probably aren't seeing uh, sales reps at this point. This has all the recommendations and the, um, basically everything we would need so I can turn around and make the proper recommendations for your facility. So we've got everything on here from paper towels, toilet paper, and even hand soap. So it's got a manual or electronic dispenser. You know, if you guys are using jet air dryers, this is a great opportunity for us to make those recommendations. Facility hygiene, it's got all this information down below that we discussed earlier. So if y'all are using shop towels, you can click on this. This is an editable PDF document that we can send out. So it's got what type of chemicals y'all are using. Is it a spray and wipe or a preset? So all this information is just basically stuff that we need in order to make the proper recommendation. Um, again, to help make sure that your facility is within the CDC guidelines and help keep your employees not only safe at work, but even at home and teach them proper hygiene habits. We've included our personal protection equipment down here at the bottom. So Blend does stock a few of our suits today. Um, our thin mill nitrile gloves, as everybody knows by now, thin mill nitrile is, is a pretty tough product to come by as well as sanitizer. Um, but we do have eyewear and apparel where we can help you guys out. So we included that down here at the bottom. And then sustainability. For those customers out there that have some sort of zero waste to landfill initiative, we have an opportunity um, down here with a program that Kimberly Clark offers called Right Cycle. Uh, and that allows us to recycle uh, you know, non-hazardous product. So your eyewear, thin monitral gloves and apparel, it has to be Kimberly Clark, but this is a massive cost savings opportunity for those customers that have zero waste to landfill initiatives. So we wanted to make sure we included that on there as well. So again, I'll stop real quick. Uh, Samuel, are there any questions or does anybody have anything? I don't see any questions, but I will be sharing these uh, handouts. Okay. with everybody that's watching so everybody's okay. going to get a copy all right so kind of switching gears from the uh you know the jet air dryers and the dry wiping for cleaning and disinfecting we wanted to uh introduce our scott pro electronic cargo towel system to everybody so scott is the number one most recognized brand in the washroom in north america with that being said we rolled out our scott pro electronic hard roll towel system last year so we basically have a game-changing direct drive dispensing technology. So this is the quietest electronic roll towel system out in the market. And we've made it a lot more efficient to dispense the towel. So everybody that you know, has jet air dryers and maybe manual dispensers where they've got the lever and they're pulling down, we're getting more and more requests now to go to a touch-free option. Um, so this is our number one selling touch-free option. It's 99.99% jam-free dispensing. Um, and then you can also see we've got different finishes for you guys, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So uh, this dispenser is 100% roll utilization. So we do have a stub roll feature, which allows you guys to use 100% of the towel that is actually in the dispenser. So a lot of times walk into a restroom, we'll see 
you know, the custodial staff will go in there, they'll change out a towel and they'll put it on the top. Well, obviously that's not very hygienic. So we uh, actually made this dispenser to use 100% of the towel. You get 40% more feet per case um, with these towels. So there's 1,150 feet per towel. We normally see about 800 feet per towel. And then our battery life, this is a huge cost savings. A lot of times, especially um, in high traffic areas and high traffic restrooms, we see you know, batteries are lasting maybe a couple of months. We're actually guaranteeing a, up to five years on our batteries. So uh, big time cost savings for you guys on batteries. And then the electronic hard roll towel system is also 10 times more reliable. And then you can see down here, we've got a couple of different options. Um, so for your toilet tissue, all the way to a hard roll towel system. Uh, we are the manufacturers of Kleenex. So um, if you guys um, need any Kleenex, that's definitely something that Blend can supply to you guys to help promote hygiene within your workplace as well. And finally, what I wanna to touch on is our dispenser penny program. So throughout the country, I'm based out of Fort Worth. So I cover North Texas, East and West Texas, but we have reps throughout the country that can work with you uh, in your facility um, for site surveys. So we actually have folks that will come out uh, if you don't already have this information and can count all the dispensers. Um, and basically in turn, uh, our dispensers from now until the end of the year are one penny. So our dispensers do have a lifetime warranty. If they break, uh, we replace them for free. And this includes everything that's on this sheet. So we have a ton of options. You saw in the last one, I had kind of a the stainless steel finish. Our penny promotion is only on black and white dispensers but it does include our new Scott Pro dispenser that we rolled out last year. So we've got the Scott Pro electronic hard roll towel system for one penny. If we get 50 or more total dispensers at your facility, so that can include paper towels, toilet tissue, hand soap, seat covers, air fresheners, so on and so forth, we actually have a team that will come in and install them at no cost to you guys. So that's a pretty big labor savings by us coming in, reinvesting back into your washroom and we're hanging up uh, brand new dispensers across your entire facility. As you can see, we've got a couple of options um, for our paper towels right here. And then as we scroll down, we have jumbo uh, cordless toilet paper, as well as just standard cordless uh, toilet paper. Um, so we have a couple of options that we can work with you guys on. Um, cordless, it's basically a higher capacity, so less change outs. Um, and for those customers that have sustainability goals, you're not throwing the paper core away each time. So all these on here are also a penny and then we go down and we have our skincare dispensers as well. So that's pretty much everything we got and that we're seeing, um, you know, as we move forward in COVID, hygiene is on the forefront of everybody's mind. So cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, as well as reinvesting back into your washroom or a couple of areas that we can help uh, with you guys today. So. Uh, Samuel, I'll turn it back over to you, and if there's any questions, feel free to let me know, and we'll do our best to help answer. I have a question. Right. Okay. Um, on the dispensers for a penny? Yes. What is their, I assume there's got to be a contract of how long they need to order Kimberly Clark for? That is not, uh, not correct. So uh, the customer actually owns all the dispensers. There's no agreement. So once the dispenser, once the customer uh, orders all the dispensers, they actually own them. Uh, so there's no contract in place. Um, you know, it's just buy them for so a penny and uh, they are proprietary them. dispensers. So only our products will fit in those dispensers. Okay. Correct. Cool. Very good. All right, thank you, Logan. Appreciate you going through that. I think sure. uh, I think this is helpful. I know knowing some of those statistics is it's pretty eye-opening, especially the stuff about like cell phone germs and <laughs> the amount of germs on my desk. Like that's a little little disturbing, but it just uh, you know shows how much cleaning there is to do, really. So we actually have a what well, we it's a for lack of a better term, it's a germ meter. So we literally take a Q-tip and check your phone and put it in the little device and it works off of light and it'll tell us how many germs are on your phone. And uh, we do that at a lot of trade shows and it's pretty disturbing. I know, that's one of those things it's like, do I really wanna know or? <laughs> <laughs> you would be surprised, vending yeah. machines and 
the bottom of women's purses and uh, some some things that you really probably don't want to know. Stuff that you would just never clean, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you both for joining. And like uh, like Logan said, you know, we're real excited to help you know, our, our partners, you know, get back to work and uh, just keep their facilities clean and keep their workers healthy. So. Well, one thing that I would uh, recommend Samuel is uh, we have a, a steps for proper hand washing uh, flyer that Logan can send you, but for okay. your folks out there listening, it, it is shocking to see what you're supposed to do when you wash your hands uh, for, for all of us, even those of us in the industry, if you look at the 12 steps, and yeah, I said 12 steps that you're supposed to uh, do when you hand wash, you'll find out that real quickly that you probably need to retrain your kids as well as yourself. <laughs> so uh, hey. one example of that is the, the first step uh, is to wet your hands with water. Hmm. So I bet you not very, not a lot of people wet their hands before they put the soap on them, for example. I've, yeah, I've seen that that guide you're talking about and uh the one that surprised me the most was at the very end taking the paper towel and using that to turn off the faucet the water yep yeah, absolutely that I, I i never even considered that that makes a lot of sense so yeah we're seeing the trend obviously as logan said earlier is going to be touchless right? right touchless water uh off and on touchless dispensers doorknobs everything it's you're going to see a, a big change coming okay yeah i appreciate having experts like you guys on the call today anytime so. all right well that's all i have as well so thank you everyone for joining today and uh i'll be sending out the recording as well afterwards so thanks for having us yeah Take i hope you all everybody. have a good yeah have a good weekend enjoy all right thank you all